everyone. If you're new around here, welcome. My name is Rachel. And I'm Ben. And we are the Map Thinners. On our channel, we share tips and tricks related to travel, as well as showing you guys our adventures around the world in our travel vlogs. But if you clicked on this video, it probably means that you're trying to find tips for how to travel as a couple for the first time. And you have definitely come to the right place. Traveling as a couple can be an incredibly rewarding experience. It can be a time to grow closer together than ever through shared experiences that come with travel, but it can also be an incredibly stressful experience if not done correctly. That's why we've decided to make this video so that we can give you some of our best tips on how to successfully travel as a couple for the first time. Let's get started. Tip number one, before you even book that flight or hop in that car, make sure to have a conversation with your partner about expectations of what you want to get out of the trip. So for example, your partner might be looking for a really slow and nice relaxing experience while you might be looking for a really fast paced, adventurous type of exciting trip. This type of difference when discovered out on the road can sometimes lead to resentment and even really huge disappointment for one or the other person when they're not getting what they're looking for. So having that sort of conversation ahead of time can make sure you're both on the same page when you're actually traveling and it can lead to a much better time. Tip number two, compromise is key. So oftentimes when you're traveling with another person, one person will usually take charge of the planning. But when you're planning, make sure that you're keeping your partner's interest in mind so that you can both have fun. What we recommend is creating a must-do list for both of you so that you make sure that you hit those key activities or foods or places or whatever you wanna do so that you are both happy. So when you're compromising, it therefore means that you might not exactly get what you want, but if you make your partner happy, it'll make you happy, which will make for an overall great trip for you both. Tip number three, be open about your budgets. Mm -hmm. So having an open and honest conversation about how you're gonna pay for things on the road can help save disagreements or any sort of resentment while you're actually on the road. Yep, so the way that Ben and I handle it is that he often pays for everything while we're traveling on his travel credit card that he has. That way we collect more travel points and then at the end of a meal or the end of the trip, depending how long it is, I will just pay him back on Venmo or PayPal and then we usually just go 50-50. Yeah, and I don't get caught up you know, counting every single penny to make sure it's exactly half. Yeah. If it's a little bit off, no big deal. You know, what goes around comes around. And you know, getting caught uh, counting every single penny can, you know, kind it can just get, it. yeah, it can get a little stressful. So mm -hmm. avoid that. So even if you don't approach travel budgeting the same way that we do, the importance here is just make sure that you talk about it before you travel. It will just make for a much stress-free, a more stress-free travel experience for both of you, so. Tip number four. Make a plan for each day, but also remember to go with the flow. <laughs> so having a plan for each day can help avoid a lot of stress along the way. But on the flip side of that, if you stick so rigidly to that plan that you can't do anything else, that can also eat. That can also lead to a lot of stress along the way. That is just no fun for anyone. Very true. Very true. So the way we like to approach it usually is we have a list of things that we would generally like to do that day. We love lists. We love lists. <laughs> <laughs> but if if we miss the bus for a tour or if we see something cooler along the way that we would rather do we like to keep an open mind to that you know part of adventure when you're traveling is to just go and experience those unexpected moments and just being open to that some of my favorite travel experiences honestly have come from those unexpected moments that you just really can't plan for uh, so just keep an open mind around that because again travel is an adventure and adventures aren't all planned out so well put <laughs> Tip number five, make sure to leave some time for alone time. So when you're traveling, especially for long periods of time, it's okay to take those breaks just for yourself to sort of rejuvenate and to make sure that your future days ahead are as best as they can be. Yeah, one way to get some alone time actually is if you have different sleeping habits. So for example, we totally do. I wake up a lot earlier than Rachel does. And I'm and a I, super night owl. Yeah. <laughs> So I like to take my mornings to have long breakfast, go for a walk, maybe have some coffee, or even maybe even exercise if I'm up to it. That's a great way to just get some quiet time mm -hmm. um, and just you know enjoy some peaceful reflection time. The moral of the story here is just because you're traveling together it does not mean that you have to spend every waking minute together. Sometimes having alone time can be really healthy actually. 
True. Tip number six, make sure to pack snacks. If you think you get hangry at home, then just wait until you find yourself hangry while traveling. We We've know. learned from experience. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when you're out traveling, you can find yourself stuck in somewhere that has no food around you. So that type of situation can lead to some serious hanger, which is why it's important to have snacks prepared for just that type of situation that can hold you over until the next time you can actually find somewhere to eat. I'm also gonna add water. There's definitely been certain hikes True. that I've, we run out of water and that just really irks me. So. Come prepared, food and water. Hold yourself over until you can find that next meal. Sometimes it can be longer than you expect. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get real angry. Exactly. Tip number seven is to embrace the coupliness of your trip. Honestly, embrace the cheese, it's really fun. It either gives you time to connect or reconnect with your partner. So if you love them that much, they're probably gonna be one of your best travel buddies. So, you know, share food so that you can try more things together, set up that romantic bonfire on the beach just because why not? Just, you know, really just, like travel with on its own is super fun, but then you add your best buddy and it's just incredible. Yeah, and part of traveling with your partner and getting these types of really fun coupley experiences is to not pack your schedule full of activities that yes. you can't get these like really nice romantic moments. Mm -hmm. Just leave some time for some slow time, for that nice dinner, for that spontaneous walk along a beautiful road. Because ultimately you're traveling with your partner to have fun with them. As Rachel said, they're your best travel buddy. So just enjoy some time with them outside of just rushing from point A to point B. And the last tip, which is tip number eight, is to try the middle seat trick when booking flights. The middle seat trick can be a great way to get a whole row just to yourselves, which who doesn't love that on an airplane? Aww. So basically what the middle seat trick is, is when you're booking airline flights, try to book when you're looking at an aisle of three, mm -hmm. book the window seat and the aisle seat because that gives you a good chance of nobody booking the middle seat because who wants to sit in the middle of people? Nobody oh, likes that. <laughs> so oftentimes that can lead to getting your whole row to yourself, mm -hmm. which is great. And if, even if somebody does book that middle seat, you can just ask to switch with that person because again, who wants to sit in between a couple if they know you're a couple? Not many people. <laughs> um, so either way, you get to sit next to each other, but with the middle seat trick, you get a chance to get that whole row to yourself. Give it a try. So that concludes our top tips for how to travel as a couple for the first time. Yeah, if you like the information we shared in this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And if you have any additional couple travel tips, leave them down there in the comment section. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And as always, we'll see you in the next video. Bye!